the dawn of the 20th century, East Asia stood at a crossroads, with the fate of nations resting on the ambitions of empires. Among the most coveted territories was Manchuria, a vast and resource-rich region in northeastern China. Its strategic location, bordering Russia, China, and Korea, made it a prime target in the growing competition between the great powers of the world. For Russia, Manchuria was not only a land of untapped potential but also a gateway to further expansion in East Asia. Securing influence over the region promised economic gains and, more importantly, control over warm water ports in the Pacific, a critical need for the Russian Empire's navy and growing global trade ambitions. In 1900, under the guise of protecting its interests during the chaotic Boxer Rebellion, Russia moved to occupy Manchuria, signaling its desire to expand its empire further eastward. But this invasion wasn't just a local conflict, it was a flashpoint in the broader imperial rivalry between Russia, China, Japan, and the Western powers. The Russian invasion of Manchuria marked a critical moment in East Asian history, one that would shape the region's political landscape for decades. It sowed the seeds of tension between Russia and Japan, leading to one of the most pivotal conflicts of the early 20th century, the Russo-Japanese War but it also highlighted the fragility of China's sovereignty as foreign powers carved up its territory in the name of empire. To understand the full significance of this invasion, we must explore the geopolitical chess game being played by the world's great powers in the region. This is the story of Russia's invasion of Manchuria, a story of ambition, conflict, and the relentless pursuit of empire. By the late 19th century, East Asia had become a geopolitical battleground, where empires old and new vied for dominance. At the heart of this struggle was Manchuria, a region coveted for its rich resources and strategic position. The fate of East Asia's balance of power rested on who could control this vast land. Three key powers had their eyes firmly set on Manchuria, Russia, Japan, and China. For Russia, the region represented the next step in its imperial ambitions, an opportunity to secure influence over the Pacific and dominate trade routes. With the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway, Manchuria became a critical link to Russia's eastward expansion, as the railway could funnel troops, resources, and goods to the Pacific coast. Meanwhile, Japan, having recently undergone the Meiji Restoration, was transforming into an industrial and military powerhouse. Victory in the First Sino-Japanese War in 1895 had positioned Japan as a rising empire in East Asia, and Manchuria's proximity to Korea made it vital to Japan's strategic interests. Control of Manchuria would solidify Japan's dominance in the region. For China, the story was one of survival. The Qing dynasty, once the dominant power in East Asia, was struggling to maintain control over its territories. Internal rebellion, foreign interference, and military defeats left the Qing government vulnerable. The Treaty of Shimonoseki, signed after the First Sino-Japanese War, had already forced China to cede Taiwan to Japan and recognize Korea's independence, weakening its grip on Manchuria and other border regions. The Qing dynasty's inability to assert control over its own borders opened the door for foreign intervention. European powers like Russia saw this as an opportunity to expand their influence, and Japan viewed it as a chance to assert dominance in its backyard. The competition between these two empires, Russia and Japan, would only intensify in the coming years, as both nations prepared for a confrontation that would change the region's history. With China weakened and foreign powers hungry for influence, the stage was set for a clash over Manchuria. Tension sparked by the First Sino-Japanese War and the Treaty of Shimonoseki would soon escalate into a larger struggle, one that would drag Russia into direct conflict with its eastern rivals. For Russia, Manchuria wasn't just another piece of land, it was the key to fulfilling its imperial dreams in East Asia. The Russian Empire, vast and cold, had long been constrained by one major challenge, access to warm water ports. Its northern coastline, locked in ice for much of the year, severely limited Russia's ability to project naval power and expand trade. Manchuria, however, provided a solution. By securing control over this region, Russia could gain access to the vital warm water ports of the Pacific, such as Port Arthur. This would allow Russian trade and military power to flow year-round, opening new gateways to Asia and beyond. One of Russia's most critical projects to achieve this goal was the construction of the Chinese Eastern Railway. 
This ambitious railway, running through the heart of Manchuria, would connect Siberia to the Pacific and serve as the backbone of Russia's imperial expansion in the region. More than just a transportation project, the Chinese Eastern Railway symbolized Russia's growing influence in East Asia. Its construction wasn't just about moving goods and people, it was a physical manifestation of Russian dominance. Troops and supplies could now be rapidly moved into Manchuria, reinforcing Russian claims over the region. But Russia's ambitions didn't stop at Manchuria. The empire had its eyes set on expanding influence over northern China and Korea. With Manchuria under control, Russia could secure its position as the dominant power in Northeast Asia, establishing a buffer zone against potential rivals while gaining control over critical trade routes. The region's rich natural resources, timber, coal, and fertile land, only added to the empire's desire to dominate Manchuria. As Russia grew more involved, the stakes in the region heightened, especially as it came into direct conflict with Japan, which also had imperial aspirations in Korea and Manchuria. Russia's long-term strategy was clear, establish economic and military control over Manchuria, assert dominance over northern China, and push further south into Korea. But in pursuing this imperial vision, Russia set itself on a collision course with other rising powers, most notably Japan. The invasion of 1900 would soon expose just how fragile the balance of power in East Asia truly was. By 1899, China was a nation on the brink of collapse. Years of foreign domination and internal strife had left the Qing dynasty weakened and unable to maintain control over its own territory. Amid growing anti-foreign sentiment, a secret society known as the The Boxers began a violent uprising aimed at driving foreign influence out of China. The Boxer Rebellion, as it came to be known, quickly spiraled out of control. What began as an anti-foreign, anti-Christian movement soon turned into a full-scale conflict threatening the interests of Western powers, including Russia, Japan, Britain, and the United States. Foreign businesses, diplomats, and missionaries were under siege, and the Qing government appeared unable or unwilling to suppress the violence. In response, an international coalition known as the Eight Nation Alliance was formed to put down the rebellion. The alliance included Western powers and Japan, but Russia's involvement was particularly significant due to its strategic interests in northern China and Manchuria. As the Boxer Rebellion raged, Russia saw an opportunity to advance its own imperial goals. Under the pretext of protecting its railway and other investments in Manchuria, Russia dispatched a large force to the region in 1900. But this wasn't just a defensive measure. For Russia, it was a chance to expand its influence deeper into Chinese territory, using the chaos of the Boxer Rebellion as a cover for its own ambitions. Under the banner of restoring order and safeguarding Russian assets, Russian forces occupied key strategic locations throughout Manchuria, including Harbin and other major cities. What began as a response to the Boxer Rebellion soon turned into a full-scale occupation. The Russian invasion of Manchuria in 1900 was justified as a necessary action to protect Russian interests. However, the reality was far more complex. Russia was positioning itself as the dominant power in Manchuria, securing its foothold in the region while other foreign powers were preoccupied with suppressing the boxers. This move was not without controversy. While the Eight Nation Alliance focused on Beijing, Russia used the Boxer Rebellion as a convenient pretext to seize control of the territory it had long coveted. Manchuria, once a peripheral region, was now at the center of Russia's imperial ambitions. By the end of 1900, Russia had effectively taken control of Manchuria. But this occupation would not go unchallenged. Russia's aggressive expansionism would soon draw the attention of another rising power, Japan. The seeds of the next great conflict in East Asia were being sown, and the Boxer Rebellion had provided the perfect pretext for Russia to take its first steps toward domination. In the summer of 1900, under the guise of protecting its interests during the Boxer Rebellion, Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Manchuria. Russian troops poured across the border, quickly overwhelming local resistance and securing key strategic locations. What followed was a rapid series of military actions that solidified Russia's grip on this contested region. One of the first major actions was the capture of Harbin, a vital hub for Russia's railway operations in Manchuria. Russian forces, well equipped and organized, met little organized resistance from the Chinese, who were already weakened by internal strife and the chaos of the Boxer Rebellion. 
From Harbin, Russian forces advanced southward, occupying key cities such as Mukden, known today as Shenyang, and other strategic locations. The Russian army, utilizing its superior firepower and logistical advantage provided by the Chinese Eastern Railway, faced minimal opposition as it pushed deeper into Manchuria. While local Chinese militias and Qing forces attempted to resist, their efforts were largely ineffective. The Qing dynasty, already fractured and weakened by decades of internal and external pressure, lacked the military strength to repel the Russian invaders. Russian troops, encountering only sporadic resistance, solidified their hold over northern Manchuria by late 1900. As the Russian army moved further south, one of its primary objectives was securing the warm water port of Port Arthur. This strategic naval base was essential to Russia's ambitions in the Pacific, giving them a permanent foothold in East Asia. Port Arthur had been leased to Russia by China just a few years earlier, but now it was fully integrated into the Russian military strategy as part of the invasion. While the military invasion was swift, the diplomatic repercussions were equally significant. Russia's aggressive expansion into Manchuria did not go unnoticed by the other major powers, particularly Japan and Britain. Japan, already wary of Russian encroachment, viewed the occupation of Manchuria as a direct threat to its interests in Korea and northern China. Britain, too, was alarmed by Russia's growing influence in East Asia, as it threatened British interests in China and the broader region. Although Britain's immediate focus was on the Boxer Rebellion in the south, its diplomats closely monitored Russia's actions, fearing that unchecked Russian expansion could destabilize the balance of power in Asia. Despite diplomatic protests from Japan and Britain, Russia continued to tighten its grip on Manchuria. By the end of 1900, most of the region was under Russian control, with its army occupying key cities, railways, and fortifications. The Cheng government, weakened and humiliated, was powerless to stop the foreign occupation. Though the Boxer Rebellion provided the initial pretext for Russia's invasion, the reality was far more calculated. Russia's actions in Manchuria were part of a long-term imperial strategy to dominate the region and establish itself as the dominant power in East Asia. But as Russia celebrated its victories, a new challenge loomed on the horizon, the rising power of Japan, which would soon confront Russia head-on in a conflict that would reshape the future of the Far East. Russia's invasion and occupation of Manchuria in 1900 did not go unnoticed by the international community. Western powers, already deeply involved in China due to the Boxer Rebellion, were alarmed by the swift and aggressive expansion of Russian influence in the region. Britain, in particular, was concerned. As the dominant imperial power in Asia, Britain saw Russian control of Manchuria as a direct challenge to its own interests. Though Britain's immediate focus was on stabilizing southern China during the Boxer Rebellion, it closely watched Russia's movements, fearing that unchecked Russian expansion could disrupt the delicate balance of power in the region. But while the Western powers were concerned, no nation felt more threatened by Russia's actions than Japan. The rising empire of Japan had long viewed Manchuria and Korea as critical to its own security. Russian occupation of Manchuria placed Japan's interests in Korea under direct threat, sparking alarm in Tokyo. Japan had ambitions of its own in the region. Since the victory in the First Sino-Japanese War, 1894-1895, Japan had been expanding its influence in Korea and northern China, securing its place as a new power in East Asia. The Treaty of Shimonoseki had granted Japan key territories and influence in Korea, but Russia's actions in Manchuria now directly undermined these gains. The Russian presence in Manchuria was viewed by Japan as more than a regional concern, it was a direct existential threat. Japan feared that if Russia solidified control over Manchuria, it could soon extend its influence into Korea, cutting off Japan's access to the Asian mainland and threatening its security. Faced with this growing threat, Japan began to shift its strategy. Diplomatic protests were made to Russia, calling for the withdrawal of troops from Manchuria, but the Russians were slow to respond. Tensions escalated, and Japan soon realized that diplomacy alone might not be enough to protect its interests. To counter Russia's growing presence, Japan embarked on a rapid military buildup. The government poured resources into modernizing its army and navy, preparing for the possibility of confrontation. With its eyes on Manchuria, Japan was making it clear that it would not back down without a fight. As diplomatic efforts between Japan and Russia intensified, other powers attempted to mediate. Britain, 
bound to Japan by a shared interest in curbing Russian expansionism, entered into talks to support Japan's position. The Western powers, including the United States, also pressured Russia to negotiate a withdrawal from Manchuria, but Russia remained defiant, refusing to cede control of the territory it had fought to secure. By the end of 1900, the situation in Manchuria had become a diplomatic powder keg. While the Boxer Rebellion had provided the initial pretext for Russia's occupation, the real struggle was now emerging between Russia and Japan. Neither side was willing to compromise, and both were rapidly preparing for what seemed to be an inevitable confrontation. The occupation of Manchuria had pushed the region to the brink of war. The seeds of the Russo-Japanese War were sown in these tense moments, as two empires, one old and one rising, prepared to clash over the future of East Asia. The Russian invasion and subsequent occupation of Manchuria in 1900 did more than just alter the balance of power in East Asia, it set the stage for one of the most significant conflicts of the early 20th century, the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905. Russia's aggressive expansionism collided head-on with Japan's rising imperial ambitions, creating a long-lasting tension that would explode into open conflict. For Russia, Manchuria was not just a foothold in northern China, it was a strategic gateway to the Pacific. Control of this vast region allowed Russia to dominate East Asian trade routes, secure its railways, and threaten the very heart of Japan's sphere of influence. Russia's presence in Manchuria also threatened Korea, a country that Japan viewed as essential to its own security. For Russia, Manchuria was not just a foothold in northern China, it was a strategic gateway to the Pacific. Control of this vast region allowed Russia to dominate East Asian trade routes, secure its railways, and threaten the very heart of Japan's sphere of influence. Russia's presence in Manchuria also threatened Korea, a country that Japan viewed as essential to its own security. But Japan would not stand by and allow Russian expansion to go unchecked. The occupation of Manchuria directly challenged Japan's emerging dominance in Korea, which it had secured following the First Sino-Japanese War. With the Japanese military now modernizing rapidly, the nation's leaders began to prepare for a potential military confrontation with Russia. The period between 1900 and 1904 saw a series of failed diplomatic efforts between the two nations. Japan sought a negotiated settlement, hoping to divide influence over Manchuria and Korea peacefully. But Russia, confident in its military superiority and entrenched position in Manchuria, dismissed Japan's concerns and continued to build up its forces in the region. As the diplomatic talks broke down, Japan realized that war was inevitable. By early 1904, the path to conflict was set. Russian troops continued to fortify their positions in Manchuria, while Japan finalized its military preparations. Japan's leadership, under Prime Minister Katsura Taro, was determined to strike first, fearing that a prolonged standoff would only strengthen Russia's hand. On February 8, 1904, without a formal declaration of war, Japanese naval forces launched a surprise attack on the Russian fleet at Port Arthur, a key strategic location in southern Manchuria. This attack marked the beginning of the Russo-Japanese War, a brutal conflict that would see Japan achieve a series of stunning victories over the much larger Russian Empire. The roots of this war lay in Russia's refusal to relinquish its control over Manchuria. Despite Russia's size and military resources, it underestimated Japan's resolve and military prowess. The invasion of Manchuria, which had initially seemed like a swift and decisive move, became a costly miscalculation for Russia as Japan asserted its dominance. Over the course of the war, Japan demonstrated its military superiority, both on land and at sea. Key victories at battles like Mukden and Tsushima shattered the myth of Russian invincibility. By the end of 1905, Russia was forced to the negotiating table, humiliated and on the verge of collapse in East Asia. The Treaty of Portsmouth, brokered by U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, ended the war in 1905. Russia was forced to withdraw from Manchuria and recognize Japan's dominance in Korea, signaling the end of Russian expansion in East Asia and the rise of Japan as a global power. Russia's invasion of Manchuria had initially seemed like a step toward greater imperial dominance, but instead, it became the catalyst for Russia's decline in East Asia. The Russo-Japanese War reshaped the balance of power in the region, marking Japan's arrival as a major military and imperial force and leaving Russia to deal with the internal unrest that would eventually lead to revolution. The road to the Russo-Japanese War was paved by Russia's ambition and overconfidence in Manchuria. 
but the outcome of that war proved that in the ever-shifting dynamics of imperial rivalries, even the greatest powers could be brought low by the underestimated strength of a rising challenger. The Russian invasion of Manchuria in 1900 left a lasting imprint on the geopolitical landscape of East Asia. While Russia's short-term ambitions were thwarted by the Russo-Japanese War, the long-term effects of this invasion reverberated throughout the region for decades. One of the most profound impacts of Russia's invasion was on Sino-Russian relations. For centuries, Russia had sought to extend its influence into northern China, but the occupation of Manchuria marked a critical moment of heightened tension between the two nations. The Qing dynasty, already weakened by internal strife and foreign intervention, struggled to maintain territorial sovereignty in the face of Russian encroachment. Manchuria, a region rich in resources and strategically located, became a battleground for imperial interests. Russia's presence, followed by Japan's victory in the Russo-Japanese War, ensured that Manchuria would remain a hotspot of geopolitical conflict for much of the 20th century. Both World War I and World War II would see the region as a key theater of conflict, and it would continue to be contested in the years to come. The long-term effects of Russian imperialism in East Asia cannot be understated. While Russia's defeat at the hands of Japan marked the beginning of its decline as an imperial power in the region, the invasion set in motion events that would shape the future of East Asian geopolitics. The occupation of Manchuria was a precursor to the ideological and military conflicts that would dominate the 20th century, including the rise of Japan as a dominant power and the subsequent challenges to Chinese sovereignty. For China, the invasion represented yet another chapter in the country's century of humiliation, a period marked by foreign domination and territorial losses. Manchuria's vulnerability to foreign intervention underscored the need for China to strengthen its military and political institutions, a lesson that would be carried forward into the Chinese Revolution and the eventual rise of the People's Republic of China. The legacy of the Russian invasion also served as a harsh lesson for the global powers of the early 20th century. It highlighted the volatile nature of imperial ambitions in East Asia and the potential for small regional disputes to escalate into larger global conflicts. In many ways, the invasion of Manchuria was a precursor to the larger battles that would unfold, including the World Wars and the Cold War rivalry between East and West. Manchuria's strategic importance, its rich resources, and its geographic position ensured that the region would remain a focal point of international rivalry. The Russian invasion of 1900 may have been a short-lived occupation, but its impact resonated throughout the century, influencing the shape of conflicts and the rise of powers across the region. Ultimately, the Russian invasion of Manchuria marked a turning point in the imperial struggle for control in East Asia. It set the stage for future conflicts, shaped the destinies of empires, and left an indelible mark on the region's political and strategic landscape. The invasion was a reminder of the dangers of unchecked imperialism and the far-reaching consequences of geopolitical ambitions.